represents the eastern part of Cobb County, which includes Smyrna, Vinings, East Cobb, Kerbaland CID, and other parts of unincorporated Cobb County. Her platform is predicated on the idea that when we are connected, we can empathize and overcome any challenge. Being a diverse metro county, her primary goal is to use the challenges the county faces to elevate conversations that communities around the country should be having. We are having. We are having this year. This is really important. Such challenges on the horizon include rapid and diverse growth, balancing development demands, environmental stability and technology, discrimination, trust in law enforcement, recession-proofing the community, and long-term wealth gaps and inequality. She believes in working closely with the community, and there are only permanent interests in advancing the public welfare. As a private citizen, Jerica is a Georgia Tech graduate in biomedical engineering, and she works full-time as a program manager at the um, Equifax. She is also a small business owner and author. It is such an honor to have you here with us in our community, in our ESL program at Biola Heights University, to get to know you a little bit more and having the opportunity to show a little bit of our community here. We have a bunch of Brazilians. <laughs> But we also have the Hispanic community. We have students from Colombia, from Peru, from Ecuador, from Argentina, and students from Turkey and Mexico. Yes. Um, so welcome. Welcome. And let's have fun. <laughs> Commissioner, it's such a pleasure to have you as uh, our director, and it's really good and sad. Uh, have you and have your assistant, Megan, with us tonight? Wait for the crowd, Megan. <laughs> uh, both of you, it's a privilege. Um, the way that we're going to do um, is uh, together we have a class, this beautiful group over here. This is my pride, my joy my privilege to learn with them they've been very kind to me uh over the semester um uh, they are the capstone class of the esl program uh, many of them carry their stories and for me it's a privilege to create space for stories our stories of life the stories that, that we can tell and we can learn from each other how do we find out where we want to go how do we motivate ourselves? What kind of resources are out there and who helped so that, that we can vicariously learn with and from you? And this is such a unique space for us. Today we're doing this as, a, you know, generally we do this here. That's the intimacy space, the, you know, the living room. I mean, we couldn't do yet uh, the, the one that will be right close to the kitchen. You okay, know, can grab some food <laughs> fast. <laughs> but at least the living room with a cozy one. And today we stand it to the entire campus over here because folks wanted to hear you too, to hear your story and to laugh. I wanted to invite uh, uh, one of my colleagues to, before making questions, even mine, let's say, so that you get to know them first, right? Let's introduce ourselves first, all right? Um, my, my, my honorable assistant, assistant too. Uh, <laughs> Mary Ellen Souza. Mary Ellen, would you please help me? Hello. <laughs> um, so as the professor said, we are the capstone of the, of the ESL program. And we appreciate your presence tonight, Madam Commissioner. 
Uh, we are a class of weight eight women, and we're very proud of our journey until now and excited for our next steps. So my name is Mary Ellen. I'm from Brazil, the state of Sao Paulo. And thank you so much for, for being here with us. Pleasure. Nice to meet you, Maria. <laughs> Hello, again. Uh, my name is Luana. I'm from Brazil, Rio de Janeiro. I have a question for you. Ah, okay. Okay. Uh -huh. For now, just introducing ourselves. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. We're still in the living room. Jornal Nacional haven't started yet. <laughs> <laughs> the news channel. Hello, my name is Jassi Lady. I'm from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Nice to meet you. Hello, my name is Flavio Chief. I enjoy your time with us. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Saira. I'm from Minas Gerais, Brazil. Thank you so much for your presence here. Hello, my name is Mariana de Souza. I'm from Sao Paulo, Brazil. And it's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> okay. Hello, I am Barbara. I'm from Brazil, Minas Gerais. You're not only Barbara, there's someone else who does that. <laughs> yes, and <Hello>. Victor, too. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi, my name is Carter Cardenas. I'm the only one from Colombia here in this class. So it's a pleasure to have you here today, and you, Megan, too. <laughs> I'll introduce myself as well. My name is Megan, and I am a Commissioner Richardson's assistant in Cobb County. I'm from Ackworth, so Cobb County. And <laughs> my neighbor. <laughs> so we are a community here. Uh, Commissioner, uh, again, such a privilege. As you see, we have folks from everywhere. Right, we have uh, professionals. You have folks who are transitioning, going into uh, more education. Folks who want to get their bachelor's. Folks who want to go to their master's. Folks who dream about possibilities. How how would you say that uh, uh, Commissioner Jerica became Jerica Richardson? What it took for you to be and become yourself where you are right now? Um, I mean, it's a constant journey. You're always discovering yourself, and sometimes you have to reinvent yourself because life brings about different challenges, right? And you learn another layer of who you are. And so today, as I sit as a commissioner, um, you know, it's, it's been my journey with politics since I was about 12 years old. Uh, and have certainly been engaged <laughs> in politics. But what triggered it for me um, was uh, when the planes went through the Twin Towers. And I said, uh, as a 12-year-old, I had a bunch of questions. And so by the time I was 13, I had a bunch of opinions. Mm -hmm. Yes. And one of the conclusions I came to is that government, in general, has the ability to cut red tape, or create red tape. And they also have the ability to influence how people interact with one another. It's, um, it's like a trickle-down sensibility, right? When you see our leaders interact in a certain way, the community tends to follow suit. And for me, as a 12-year-old, as a there were different questions that I had, not just about um, why, what was going on internationally, but also what was taking place with my friends in school. They were treating each other differently because I mean, one of my friends, she's, um, she's Muslim, which of course at that time, and certainly still today, but at that time it was, um, there was a lot of, uh, there were a lot of harsh feelings directed towards those of, of, the, of the practice. And um, for me, it's just tragic because if we think about diversity and how we're created, and if you truly believe in, I mean, for me, it's, it's, I like to see people the way that God sees people, right? Mm -hmm. if, if he's created everyone, then therefore his design is in everyone. Mm -hmm. And it's up to us to practice love because that's what we're supposed to be modeling. And that's 
a very specific thing, of liberty, opportunity, value, and empathy. And so it led me to want to ask those different questions about understanding the value of, of differences and diversity. And um, fast forward, my involvement just got greater and greater in, in, in how I engaged with elected officials. And then, um, and I'm from New Orleans originally, okay. So uh, Hurricane Katrina hit, and so um, my family was 16 at the time, so my family was affected, we lost everything, and um, went to Atlanta. And so in that uh, period, I was also trying to pursue a music career. And I know this is a long, complicated answer, but I'm trying to illustrate the point that none of this is direct, and it's not like I woke up and I said, I'm going to be a commissioner, and, and then it happened. Um, but no, I, I was trying to pursue a music career. So at, at, in the daytime, I was attending all of my lab classes and engineering classes. And at night, I was all around the city <laughs> trying to get into, trying to break in. Um, and what's interesting about Atlanta politics, because mind you, New Orleans is a completely different area from Atlanta. So I, I'm kind of detached at this point. Um, a lot of entertainment attorneys run for office mm -hmm. in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So chances are, if you're in that realm, if you're in the entertainment industry, you're gonna run across a politician somewhere. Mm -hmm. And well, I did. <laughs> so um, got very involved in Atlanta politics. Um, first race I, I kind of worked on as a hobby was um, the Atlanta mayor's race for Kasim Reed. And then that went on into other races as well. So this is kind of my like hobby as I was doing school. Mm -hmm. That's what I was doing in, in the after hours. And then um, after after graduating, after you know holding a, a couple of different roles in, in the corporate world, um, I picked up a side gig actually being a campaign manager and got a few people, a few different people elected who are currently serving now, and eventually ran for office myself to continue to bring that type of leadership to the table as best as I possibly could. As you are. As you are. Thank you. Uh, I mean, it's amazing how, how uh, events uh, create opportunities, networks, and connections, um, and also create the opportunity to, to discover who you are deeply, right, who you are, your motivation. Uh, just to add on to that, because the, the other main thing I want everyone to just take away with is um, the stuff you do and create, they're all tools. So like, become intimately aware first with who you are so that you know what tool you want to use, right? If you, I really read my biography, it lists a few different things. It's because that's just what's in me, but they're all different tools. Writing is a tool. Technology is a tool. Politics is a tool. But it's it's a tool that is an extension of whatever is on the inside of you. And that's what you bring to your profession. You use the word tool, and you also use your word discernment, um, of discerning, discerning uh, your, 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 how, how, how do you, how have you been connecting this, this um, um, this ability to encounter the the power to make things actually happen, because it is so. There are so many voices that uh, that I will tell people that uh, they can't, they they shouldn't. There are so many voices that uh, that uh, uh, break us apart. Um, how how do you? How do you maintain yourself uh, motivated uh, and, uh, and empowered to, to bring action uh, to be? Well, you remember that we all have the same creator, then no person is greater than the next. No person is better than the next. No person is less than the next. So you have everything in you. And certainly in my life and witnessing others throughout my life, most of the opportunities we've cut ourselves off of from because we discourage ourselves. That's not for me, and this is for, for the women. It's especially true when it comes to women. And one of the things that I, I did at Equifax is actually 
created the Global Mentorship Program for Equifax for technology. And that's one of the key things that we focused on is how do you rewire your programming <coughs> that discourages you? And it doesn't mean that it all goes away, but you have to be able to recognize it when you're feeling it. And certainly I feel it gender-wise, I feel it racially. Um, I'll never forget. <laughs> we were canvassing for Kasim Reed, and the organizers were like, well, we're going to put you in a million dollar neighborhoods because you seem like a less threatening black person, Ooh. which is understandable in politics, okay? It's a, it's, a, it's a strategic decision. And so I had never been in a neighborhood with that many large houses, okay? I come from very modest means <laughs> in New Orleans, and I was by myself. They dropped me off long road, all of these huge houses, probably some super fancy people, which I kind of think I'm getting there now, you know, but super fancy people. And I was like, oh my gosh, I feel intimidated. Mm -hmm. And so before I knocked on a single door, I sat on the curb and I reflected on why do I feel intimidated? Because if I'm going to do the things that I know are inside of me, that can't be the reason that I don't do it. And this opportunity to go meet different people and experience a different, you know, push myself beyond that intimidation is going to be helpful for me in the future. I have to be able to allow myself to, one, feel the feelings, discernment, and then rewire it work through it. <coughs> Why do I feel this intimidation? <coughs> Forgive myself for being intimidated, because that's the other thing. We carry around this guilt of like, oh, I'm just such a horrible person. Those things happen, and we say it to ourselves, and we begin to believe it, but you have to check it. And then after I said, oh yeah, nobody's greater than the next, they don't, even, they don't think anything of it. They're just living their lives, and I'm going to go knock on the door to say, hey, have you heard of Kasim Reed? You haven't, you like him, you don't, okay. Whatever it is, that's all the conversation is. And I, after I reflected, I picked myself back up and went and knocked all those doors, spent some time on the porches, swinging and talking to some of the people that lived in the neighborhood, just whatever issues, because at the end of the day, we're all humans. And, um, and that experience was very important. And it's a, it's a, I use a small one to kind of indicate a larger principle, but we come across those moments over and over and over. And I feel intimidated right now. I'm in a room of people who are expecting to get something from this experience, right? No one wants to sit here and say, well, that was, uh, <laughs> no one came out tonight to spend their time to say, well, you know, I probably could have stayed home and ate there. That's an intimidating thing, but you pick yourself up and say, all right, I'm going to give my best. They want to hear my story, I'm going to tell my story. And maybe it's relevant for someone. Maybe it's not relevant for everyone. Maybe there are some people that walk away and that's exactly how they feel. But maybe there, there are people that hear the story and they say, oh, I picked up something. And that person becomes less afraid to take the next step in their life. That's important. And that's why you just keep doing it. You just keep showing up, regardless of the intimidation you might feel. Thank you so much. And, and, and I mean, we, we, we have to respond to that one, right? I mean, I, I mean, by far, by far, by far, there is, shouldn't be any concern that uh, if we would be getting anything out, of, we're getting a lot. The the constructions of the space, the constructions of of <coughs> the retelling of stories that invite people to share and make stories, stories of our lives, like what you have been doing. And so one last curiosity that I have is that because you, not only because professionally, I mean, as, as an elected official, 
but also as, as, as the way that we experience your own personality, right? You are able to make connections and, and, and invite people into spaces of, of exchange. How, how is this? What has that been for you? The networks, the resources to accomplish the, the, the motivation and the dream and the vision. How did you manage that? We all need each other. You mean nobody arrives alone, right? I mean... <laughs> or by their bootstraps, I, I right? I don't remember giving birth to myself. <laughs> there were a couple of factors involved <laughs> in that. Um, no, I mean, even... I like to say, life is like a classroom, right? And the thing, the experiences you have, while they may influence you, they don't define who you are. It's like, if you go to math class, you don't become math. Like, that's absurd, right? That's kind of a crazy thought. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with life. We run across experiences that are traumatic, that are painful, that, 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 that may cause you to, to, to restrict yourself, constrain yourself. And we go, we run across experiences that just expand our worlds, make us excited and thrilled and motivated. Sometimes you watch a good movie and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna go solve everything in the world. Um, but it's a classroom, right? You meet people who are just, you're like, man, I have a lot of blessings because I'm not, it, but for God, that could be where I am. Um, and you meet people that are like, man, I kind of wish I had that, or I would probably use it a little bit differently if I had what they had. But they're lessons. It's not for you to be that person, ever. Don't always be yourself, right? I, I know when you're growing up, people are like, just be yourself. And it's like, yeah, I don't know how to be anybody else. So like, don't try to be someone else, just be you. But they're lessons, and you can learn from one another. I mean, the, the love thing, like, it's liberty, which is your ability to, to function, to, to be, to think, to do. Um, it's, uh, it, for me, it's, uh, it's, it's the inter I, I interpret in the, like, the image of God, the likeness of God, it's the idea of um, having the ability to think of creation and create. Those were, the, those were the, the, the blessings that we're all kind of endowed with, right? You can think, I'm hungry, and then you go get something to eat. You stir it up, you, you cook something, and you eat. We have that ability, um, but that's the liberty piece. It's the, it's the ability to, to live a life that is of you. And then opportunity is the opportunity to, to express yourself, right? It, it, it's, it's upsetting when, when opportunities are taken away. And so you want to create equal access to opportunities. Everyone's not the same, so you don't want everyone to get the same thing. But equal access, everyone gets the same chance to be who they are. And then value. What's the value that someone brings? Well, that, that takes intentional connection. That takes listening. That takes um, trying to understand, well, what do you want to do? What do you want to do in this world? You want to impact a business. You want to take them to the next stage, right? You want to take some group, some organization to the next stage. So if I know that, and I have some resource that allows or enables that dream to manifest, that means I appreciate the value that she's looking to bring to this world. But that takes asking and listening, like I said. And then empathy, that's the piece that says, well, what are the eyes that you're looking through? Like I try to explain, when, especially when I'm talking about racism, because I've always said, what is racism? It doesn't exist. Like, yeah, it, it's a thing. <laughs> Sometimes, you know. But I said, imagine you want to start a company. Uh, you're a German company. And you want to start a company in Mexico, right? But you don't realize that everybody speaks Spanish. Are you going to put out all the applications in German? And then you wake up and you say, how come I only got four applications? They must not want to work for my company. Lazy people. <laughs> Why would they do that? 
But it takes one person to say, well, you know, they speak a completely different language. <laughs> and say, oh, well, let's change the applications to Spanish. And then everybody starts applying. Well, that's empathy. That's understanding where someone else is coming from and what experiences they have that shape how they interact with opportunities. Same difference for diversity. You've got to know what lens people are walking, looking through so that you can accommodate if you want to change. Now, nothing says a German company has to have a company in Mexico, but in the situation that they claim they want to, you have to do the work. You have to ask the questions. You have to build empathy. And so those are the things that L-O-V-E actually, that, that is what defines love. It's, it's listening, it's understanding value, it's looking through the, the lens, it's equal access, it's opportunity, it's, um, and it's liberty. It's understanding that we all are endowed with these amazing powers of manifesting. And that's honestly how you manifest a thing. I mean, I, I like I like that that kind of manifest without the destiny, but without that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and and as far as I remember, Commissioner, I mean, uh, the, the German the Germans do have uh, 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 some factors over there in Mexico. The 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 Beetle is still being made over there, and the, the Volkswagen. Uh, <laughs> but the, we're on applications, guys. There we go. <laughs> I mean, this is th th these are very important uh, 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 elements of, of how is it that uh, we we encounter those spaces? How is it that we take responsibility and opportunity for all of those factors to create these communities? Our folks have questions, um, and our PR uh, 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 person that has been working with us uh, uh, over here, I heard that uh, you organized the whole set of questions for, for folks. I mean, I'm, I, I, I don't need to be doing that, that's all. Why don't that? Yes. Um, I will do that. Why don't you start? Hello again. Hello again. <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah, you're ready? Okay. Set. <laughs> So and, and it's not my 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 the first question it's Mariana so I'm gonna I have all the questions okay. so I'm going to do the direction okay so Mari <laughs> hi again <laughs> well my question is um, as a group of women uh, who have changed careers and entire lives in a new country. Uh, we often find ourselves overwhelmed and um, with uh, a lot of responsibilities. Um, as a woman, who, how do you balance your, your responsibilities as a commissioner and your, your, with your, your other roles? Great question. Mm -hmm. And Megan's going to laugh at me. <laughs> <laughs> it was the first question that I <laughs> was that, the first question that I, I thought when I yeah. read your, your yeah no 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 so the first thing is and this is where you're gonna laugh know how to say no to certain things that's the first thing right so if you know what your purpose is if you know what your vision is if you know where you're trying to go then the things that don't advance that, you say no to. Right? Don't try, remember that earlier thing, don't be someone you're not, like all that. If you know and you're growing and you're developing and you're open-minded and centered, then when things encounter your world, your space, and they're just kicking at you and you have no control over them or they're just, just, okay. I'm focused. You're focused on what it is you're trying to do. That's the first thing. The second thing is village. You gotta have a village. You gotta have your community. Oh my gosh. I mean, one of the sayings, if you wanna go fast, go alone. But if you wanna go far, go together. Yeah. 
Because it's true. That's why I have to say. <laughs> we don't do these things alone, as we discussed earlier. But having that village, having that community, because the truth is, sometimes you won't know when something's a distraction. Sometimes, sometimes the overwhelming is overwhelming. I mean, I am, I am in the middle of overwhelming right now. In my, in my career, in my commission seat, I, we are carrying on the weight of democracy in the state of Georgia. It is a fight with the Supreme Court. It is a fight with the state legislature. It is a fight with all of it, with, with, with um, ethics issues, with all kinds of things. But I have the most amazing community. And they pour into me. When I'm feeling down, they say, no, Jerrica. It's okay, dust yourself off, mm -hmm. it's a new day. Or they send me care packages, or they ask me to marry them. <laughs> <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a village, it's a village. You know, my parents, they, they live in Kennesaw, and so they're able to watch it um, and be very, um, opinionated parents on the sidelines as all of this is going on. Um, but it's all okay because I've got to reflect. I've got to sit on the curb. I have to reflect. Why do I feel intimidated? Why do I feel overwhelmed? And then dust myself off because this is an important experience for what it is that I ultimately am going to have to do in this world. And so those would be the keys that I would say, and, and certainly, as, as you can tell, faith is a huge part of it. So even when everything looks like it's crumbling, I remember I've been through worse. I've been through harder, and if I haven't been through harder, so many other people have. So what room do I have to complain? Pick myself up and go knock on those doors. <laughs> So hopefully that helps. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Commissioner. Uh, I think it's important to us understand and see that an important person like you has the same feelings, of course. And it's good to, to understand all, because of course everybody here has uh, they, their life, they're struggling. So it's good to see we have the same the same situation. Yes. Uh, the second uh, question is Luana. She's <laughs> now she can ask. <laughs> Look, she's been waiting to ask this. this question. Yeah. So please, I'm gonna put the mic. <laughs> now I have a question. Uh, thank you for uh, sharing your story, your experience with us. Tonight, I'm very happy to talk to you about things and career and future. Um, in this date, six years ago, in this time, I arrived in the United States. I, I, don't, I didn't speak in English, nothing. Well, very impressive. Yes. <laughs> Today. <laughs> uh, tonight, I can talk to you in your language. <laughs> I'm very happy. <laughs> and, um, my question. <laughs> uh, what motivated you to enter in politics? Was there a specific event that inspired you to dedicate yourself to public service? Yeah, um, I mean, it's, it's not a specific event, but the specific event that triggered my interest in politics and in playing in the political world was, um, was, was when the Twin Towers fell. But it's a culmination of so many different moments throughout my life that ultimately put me where I decided to run for the commission seat. And 
um, kind of like a nerd. What, what inspired that was I was reading our county code because someone said, hey, I know. <laughs> Telling on my anyway, um, someone said, "Oh, you should look at the commission seat." And I was like, "Okay, I know a little bit about the commission, but what can a commissioner really, really do?" And I knew the things I wanted to do in the community, and so I was like, "Okay, Mini Code." <laughs> Pulled it up. It's digital. For anyone that wants to know about the Cobb County Code, it's digital and it's legal language. So let me know if you ever need help parsing through that. Um, but when you read the powers of what commissioners can do, police, fire, power, water, air, soil, economic development, community building, 911, emergency management, disaster recovery, the parks, the roads, traffic, so many more things. That's just a sample of what commissioners influence. Quiz question. How many commissioners are in Cobb County? One, two, five. All right, so now we're gonna do some math. If you need a majority, to make a policy change, how many people do you need to convince? <laughs> That's right. So if you're a commissioner, how many people do you need to convince? Two. So you're telling me I can make things happen by convincing two people? <laughs> oh, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> <laughs> like, please, God. <laughs> And I threw my hat in the ring. And I knew that I could bring the com community with me to get things done and just expose it all. Because when you learn how powerful commissioners are, you in turn become powerful too. Because now you can go and say, I just need to convince how many people? You. Three people. How many of you, how many of you have convinced at least three people on what, what, what to eat at night? Oh man, you're on your way. <laughs> so that is how government should feel. It should feel right there. Right? But it shouldn't feel far away. And so, yeah. Now I'm the person. And so is my community. So hopefully that answers that question. Mm -hmm. And a little bit more, so sorry. <laughs> uh oh. Do you want to pass this around? Hello. Oh, okay. oh. <laughs> so the first question is mine. Um, from my research, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, please, uh, but show me that you were founder of a program called Friendly Advice. Mm -hmm. uh, and for what I understand, it's like a consultancy, that's, mm -hmm. that's the word I think, uh, that helps companies with certain issues. Uh, my question is, uh, how um, I would like to know how um, made you decide to focus in companies and help them. Companies for me are kind of spiritual, right? I talk about creating and the thought of creation. Like, how many of you have woken up and you're like, "Man, there should be a company that does A, B, and C." Yeah, it's kind of spiritual, right? You're like, "I can create this thing if only I had the ability or the resources to do it." Um, and so you have small businesses all over the place. You have also mid-size, and obviously I work for a larger company now, but um, friendly advice, I wanted it to feel friendly because it was marketed to smaller businesses. And it was really just the, what's that hump that you're trying to get over? So I got a chance to work on um, creating patents, uh, recycling materials, uh, helping a company get its footing so they could secure some, some local, local government contracts. Um, so it was a really fun endeavor to, to help these 
companies grow what they saw in their minds. Um, plus, I needed extra income. So, I started a company. <laughs> Guys, I mean, most, most of life is pretty practical. Um, but yeah, so, so that's, that's really what prompted Friendly Advice, is I wanted to be able to help companies. I knew I could offer different <coughs> skill sets, and um, especially with my background. Mm -hmm. Thank you again. Mm -hmm. So next question is Lady. Thank you for sharing your life. It's uh, very important for us, especially for me. Um, my question is, what are the biggest challenges you face in your position as a commissioner? <laughs> <laughs> How long do I get to answer this question? <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> the biggest issue, and this is honestly, I would say it's probably true for all electeds, it's trust. Like, let that sit. <laughs> exactly. It's the trust, trust with the community. Because if you don't understand something, you automatically distrust it. Right? How many people have ever studied government? Right. There's a lot to distrust. When the process looks confusing, when you walk into those buildings and the camera's rolling and words are scrolling and you're like, I don't understand. We're, we're speaking in a, a weird, you know, back and forth, you know, call it a question, point of order, point of clarity. <laughs> it's, it can be intimidating. Um, so, so trust, those meetings don't help create trust because you walk away just as confused as when you entered. Um, and then the elected officials don't trust each other either. Why? Because, well, what's the incentive for them to trust each other? You would say the people that they represent, but everybody represents someone different. Everybody represents a different part of, especially in Cobb County, there are different desires throughout the county. So, if the commissioners don't trust each other, remember we talked earlier about the trickle-down sensibility thing? Well, then it's hard for the community to trust the commissioners. And it's an unfortunate thing because, as I said earlier, when you understand things, when you understand how power works, then you, in turn, become powerful. But if all of that is broken, then it's very hard to make things happen. So most of my time as a commissioner is spent strategizing <laughs> on how we can build more trust. And we still haven't solved it. As, ma as many hours as we've spent, as much money as we, my own personal dollars put into it, as many different things as we've tried, it's still more that's required. So that, that is the current, the, the, the biggest challenge. And you know, when we look, of course, at national politics, for anybody that doesn't know, I'm, I'm, I'm running for Congress right now, for US Congress. They're wild, just wild. But again, it's because there's no incentive for any of them to trust each other. So, trust. <laughs> so the thanks so much again. The fifth question is from Barbara. Thanks for sharing your your life. Uh, my question is: When you start the pos your position of yes, a commissioner, what your goal you did set for your term? A lot. <laughs> I mean, you heard the list. 
I don't remember when, when, when I first got elected, because I do community huddles, right? Every two weeks on Thursday night and on Saturday morning, we do a community huddle where people just hop in and we talk about it. It's the community that runs the, they, they, they set the agenda and I just answer questions the whole time. One member was like, why do you have 45 goals on your website? Now, I will tell you, today it is 368. Uh, Am I lying? I think it's 60. Oh, um, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I missed one. <laughs> Why do you have 40-something things on here? What are your top three? I said, I have way too much power to just do three things. And I represent way too many people with way too many issues to do three things. He's like, but you have a point. If it were just me by myself, I could probably only do three things. But me with the community, let's just do them. And that was the philosophy that we brought. <coughs> That's what we brought. Um, I also wanted to make sure to the trust point that we could build avenues to power for members of the community, that we could reach more people, that we could you know, one, I always, it was one of the campaign promises I made was that everyone would have a seat at the table. How many people do I represent? Do you know? 200,000 people. Does anyone have a table that's big enough to hold 200,000 people? Anybody? Let me know, because I might want to use it. <laughs> I don't. And so to do that, I wanted to establish voices that represented groups of the community, different perspectives, different vantage points. And I called that my cabinet. And there are 27 members on the cabinet, which is a very interesting amount. But 27 members on the cabinet, each representing a specific area of expertise or a community type of grouping. And we meet monthly, and they help me accelerate policy. And thus far, we've been able to get through, get over 100 items through the office. And as long as I am still allowed to stay in office and the Supreme Court does not remove me, then we're on track to complete all 369 of those initiatives. And how did it go from 40 something to, 50, to, to 369? Because people had things that they wanted to see. It's like you give me a call and you say, hey, I really, we really should have a program that connects this program to the Board of Commissioners so that whenever there's an opportunity for education or COB 101, all the capstones get a chance to go to COB 101. And I would say, interesting. That sounds like a program. Let's make a program. And let's implement it. And I'm a commissioner, so I just implement it. And that's what we do. <laughs> Thanks, Meg. <laughs> so hopefully that answers your question. Sorry. There we go. <laughs> uh, thank you again. Um, the next question is from Flavia. Um, so I'm mom too. My question is about what measure do you propose to enhance, enhance, secu enhance security in Cobb County School and ensure the safety of the student and the staff? Mm. It's my preoccupation about this. Okay. So I remember I said there was a long list of things that commissioners can do. The one thing that's not on there is the schools. We don't have jurisdiction over the schools. There is a separate board for that, the school board. They are a separately elected body. I usually like to say they're as different from our government as the state of Utah. They have their own ethics that they report to. They have their own procedures, their own structure. They are a completely separate body. And that being said, where there are opportunities is in dialogue, in conversation, and finding ways to influence the school board, which is a little wild. 
here in Cobb County right now. Um, but certainly there are some things that can be done. Um, I know one of the things we're looking at is around street safety. Um, but in the schools, they have their own police. It's a, like I said, it's a completely separate entity. They have their own land, um, but we can influence it through adding monitors and making sure that we have uh, quick emergency responses, right, when something does happen. Um, like McKee Churn was very, very scary, um, but that rollout on, as, in terms of what happened, that's an opportunity where maybe we can coordinate with their police and say, hey, why don't we try this alternative way for how you engage with the parents and how you get that information out quickly. Um, but it is tricky when it comes to the schools because they are their own elected body. They vote on their own things. They, they have their own wherewithal to be your representative. So that's also why it's really important to be involved and engaged in the decisions that are being made um, with these different bodies. Uh, but I, I will say, I, I know I have an easier time influencing our state reps and our federal reps than I do with our school board right now. Mm -hmm. Hi. Um, about this, um, this question, um, it's a different board, uh, but you guys have uh, uh, intimacy to talk and discuss some questions about the security, about the schools, or no? But as I was saying, that's the closest we have. It's influence. But truthfully, like our ability to influence is the same as yours okay. mm -hmm. because they're their own body. That's why the community needs to be involved and engaged. Involved. So I can make that call and say, hey, why don't we look at this? But it's even more powerful when the parents do. It's even more powerful when their constituents do because they also have to be elected. It's an important voice. You got it. Yeah. You got it. So it, 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 it doesn't mean that there aren't things in the peripheral that we can try to do around, nearby, those types of efforts directly, but everything else is through influence. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so the next question is Saida. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there, there are a few things. Um, so I mentioned life as a classroom. That's one of those lessons. Um, it's also that nothing's really permanent. It may feel like it, but nothing's really, truly permanent. At any moment, your entire life can change. At any moment, everything can be taken away or accelerated. And so what, what that leaves you with is how do you maximize the moment you have right now, the present. Now you plan for the future, you make sure that you're thinking about it and you reflect on the past, but the most important thing you have right now is the time you have right now. And people rarely remember what you say, but they always remember how you make them feel. Mm -hmm. So those would be some of the main things. And then just be yourself. But you got to know what that means. You got to know what that means. Thank you. 
I, I don't want to confuse it with what mistakes, because I've made a lot of mistakes throughout life. It's not that I don't believe that I haven't made mistakes, but I believe that every mistake and everything that today I consider to be a successful decision, they were all important for my life, including not getting the things I wanted, including losing things I thought I had. It was all important. And I think that um, it's just, it enriches life. It really does. Um, you have to live every day as though it is your last day. I tell them, you know, today was it. Like, I lived a pretty good life. I, I did the things I wanted to do. I didn't do all the things I wanted to do, but the things that I knew that I could do, I did them. I said no to the things I wanted to say no to sometimes. <laughs> but I learned from them. I met some cool people, did some cool things. I'll be okay. It's all right. And that gives me peace. So, yeah, I mean, it's just, it, it, like I said, it doesn't define who you are, it does influence who you are. <coughs> But it, I wouldn't want to change anything because I'd be concerned about what that would mean. That might have added some additional knowledge around finances. That might have been helpful. <laughs> but. Again, it's a part of the journey, and because I went through a whole spell with that, I can empathize with other people that have also gone through that. So like, I wouldn't want to take that away either, even though it might be frustrating right now, but I wouldn't want to take that away or add that because I might not see people the same way or something. I don't know. I don't know. So I don't really want to change it. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Commissioner. It's, it, it's, it is a privilege to see the, your journey and the, the, the person and the woman in the journey, the person that you're becoming. I mean, it, it takes a lot of courage to believe in becoming rather than the closed and kind of uh, marketable things. To be with a real person that dares to take responsibility to make a difference, to, to face the realities that our communities are, I mean, we are delighted to hear your story and to see you. Thank you. We can see you, Madam Commissioner. Thank you. Now, look at this. We have a whole bunch of folks that have been observing faithfully. Some of them are in English level one. So, and these folks, what is level one here? Yeah, yeah the biggest group. <laughs> you, you are a joy. You've been working. Do, do you realize your English, your growth, brought you this far with an elected official of our community over here that is here to hear you. So, let me get off from there over there. I, I'm, I'm so curious to hear your question. I heard that uh, you had a question. Um, I, uh, the mic was going to go around. The commission. The question is, are there any volunteer opportunity for international students? Are there opportunities for volunteering? Are there any volunteer opportunities for international students? You know, 
language is one of those things that allows us to build those relationships, but there are so many other ways to build relationships. And as we are going through that journey together, there's still work that can get done. <laughs> so certainly if there's anyone that's interested in, in volunteering in the community or volunteering with our office or just volunteering in general, let us know. Don't, don't cut yourself off from the opportunity because you say, oh, well, that must not be for me. Oh, well, I'm not ready for that. Or I don't know enough yet. Or, <laughs> or you know, uh, they're going to look at me differently. Or they're going to treat me like I don't know what I'm doing. Preach, preach, preach. Hey, hey. <laughs> Don't let that song play. It is a tired song. It is overplayed. New song. Remix. Praise God. How about we say, I'm going to push myself. How about we say, yeah, it may be hard. But I'm tough. Yes? Yes. 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 You got this far. Yeah. <laughs> every time that you have to stand up in the classroom, every time that you have to stand up in the classroom, late at night, after all that you had to do to finish your program, Every time that you have to do that, you're getting closer to what you believe that you have been called to be. Amen. And uh, I just wanted to, to affirm, that's why you are here today too. That's why this, the bridge, who is you. What's your name, brother? Angelo. Angelo. I like that pronunciation, man. Reggie. I can be a little bit Italian too, but they know. Yeah. <laughs> they... Mm. Oh. Yeah. It makes sense. <laughs> so Angelo, that's this is it. That's the continuing walking together and believing that we can build a different tomorrow for our communities. But we need to choose and we need to act and we need to persist on that together. So, uh, where, where is class level two? Who is class level two? 2A. 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 Um, only the students, or can I represent them? Okay. If they, if they would be waiting. Power to the students. Hello, hello. <laughs> uh, good night, everybody. It's a huge pleasure to have you here. Listening your words is very helpful and. Um, I think I speak for everybody. That's a huge opportunity to know so far and so much you have done this time. So my question is like when you speak about politicians, um, I think most of us Brazilians, we have a uh, difficult situation about this subject. So how you guys or how you may, you have seen how politicians work in our community and how you guys um, um, how can I say, uh, protect and avoid bad situations, um, avoid uh, situations about corruptions and that make protect and work properly for the community. How does this, how this work for you guys? Great question. 
I'm going to have a disappointing answer. Uh, there's nothing special about politicians. Every organization, group of people you encounter, when you have people, you have different motivations. And that surfaces. Sometimes it looks like corruption. Sometimes it's perceived as corruption and it's not. Um, but it's just, you have a group of people, whether it's a company, a school, I'm sorry. <laughs> it surfaces. So the best way to, to, to protect the community is through education. Where's over there? No. <laughs> so, does the county have uh, special programs for immigrants or international students, and how we, how can we get involved with the county? So maybe, or I mean, if I have a financial aid or a scholarship for the people wants to get a degree next to the ESL? Great question. So there are a couple of answers I'm going to give you. Not as disappointing as <laughs> we're all grew up. But um, so one of the things, there's the cultural aspect of the immigrant story, right? And so Cobb County has something called the International Festival, which brings in different cultural exhibits. And it's kind of a really fun thing. And that was something the chairwoman, our current chairwoman, um, brought, created in Cobb County several years ago. And so that happens on an annual basis. It did get stalled with COVID, but it came back. That's more on the cultural side, right? As far as government operation, things like scholarships and stuff. So I'm going to see how I can shorten the story. Um, there's really not a lot of specific programs when it comes to um, diverse groups. Now, there, there's, for the first time in the county, a DEI program that kind of evaluated where we are as a county, because mind you, it's been a similar kind of board for a long time, up until 2020, okay? Um, so, so some new initiatives surfaced. Um, but there really aren't specific programs, and there are a lot of rules around how tax dollars can be spent to the question about corruption. <laughs> lots and lots of laws that protect us and protect the community because these are public dollars, right? And that's a whole other conversation, which happy to, because we're nerds, so happy to get into that too. But one of the things that we did in our office was um, so I'm familiar a little Brazil, and I know it's been around, but it hasn't been acknowledged. And I, it, it, it blew my mind. It was like, yeah, there's so many Brazilians that it's known as little Brazil in Brazil. And I was like, and people in Marietta don't even know. Okay, interesting. <laughs> and so, with that effort, one of the things we wanted to look at was not just you know, acknowledging that it is, it exists, and certainly looking at the businesses. But for me, this is also about economic development, connecting opportunities, making sure that the grants that are available at the federal government, because they have a little bit, they have a different set of rules when it comes to how dollars can be spent, um, that there is a relationship that can help those funds make it to different communities. Uh, so with the Little Brazil initiative, because the other thing to note, who's familiar with like gentrification, where new investments come in, and then it becomes too expensive, and everyone who was originally there leaves. Well, it's kind of very hard to protect against because the people that live there also want those improvements, right? And so one of the creative strategies that we've come up with is to say, hey, if we can invest in the local businesses in those areas, and the people within those areas, then the money can circulate in the community, which
which means as it improves, the people's income also improves, which means they can stay in the community. So it's one of the things that we're kind of testing out with the Little Brazil concept. And so in order to anchor that, we're working on a community center to assist with um, bridging some of those gaps and a nonprofit, so uh, connected with some of the community leaders so that there could be a formalized nonprofit structure that businesses can be a part of and can have representation so that when we go to the Chamber of Commerce, we say, here's the Little Brazil organization. The grants that you receive at the Chamber now become, it becomes a, a, an opportunity. So even if, it's, even if I don't exist anymore, that relationship can still be there and the funds can still continue to circulate. So we are working on establishing some of those things for the future to answer that question about what is there for, certainly with the Brazilian community, but there are other communities as well where these kinds of structures can be put in place. Good evening, Ms. Jerrica. Good evening, guys. Uh, I confess that I'm really impressed with your life story because, uh, as you said before, you said that everybody needs help. And your story is about help, helping people. That's why, from now, I'm going to pray your life in my prayers to God. Yeah. Because day by day, I can see that you leave your home and you leave your family and go to several places asking for helping people, right? So in, I'm not the, the first to, 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 to speak, to talk to her today, to ask a question, but in, on behalf of Beulah Heights students, uh, from yourself program, I'd like to congratulate you, congratulate you to, for your story, for your life, and uh, uh, my question is about help with other too. I confess I made a, a script, <laughs> but I tried to to let, leave my cell, cell phone aside. But I need to read my question. <laughs> Uh, I forgive you. <laughs> uh, regarding um, the relationship between companies and customers, in Brazil we have a government government body called uh, Public Defender's Office, uh, uh, where we can appeal to try to resolve, to solve some problems, some issues, right? Uh, relating concerning the relationship between sellers and buyers. The same situation happens here. Happens here. Sometimes we need to, to go to somewhere to solve our problem. We need to turn to the legal system to be compensated, compensated by a company to, for the purchase or, or of a pro product or service. We know that uh, we can consult a, a, a lawyer, but we know also that sometimes this kind of professional is very expensive. Yes. So in, in, the, in this way, uh, I'd like to ask if uh, we can find here in Cobb County some place, any place where we can uh, turn to the kind of profes professional to ask him for a free legal advice of consultants. This is my, this is my, my question. Thank you. Hmm. So, there are three layers to this. Sorry. <laughs> in advance. Um, it's a great question. And certainly in the history of our state, it was a fight to make sure that there were criminals, that everyone had a right to um, access a criminal attorney. Nonetheless, the law area that we're referring to here is civil law. I mean, between two parties, it's not really a crime, there's just a dispute. 
a disagreement of someone maybe feels wrong, um, some type of right was violated, but it's not a criminal statute, right? And um, one of the things that I absolutely believe in is uh, at some point as a nation, we need to get to the <coughs> point where there is free access for civil representation, that everyone is guaranteed a right to, to, to access representation in civil matters. Um, primarily because entire people lose children over civil matters. People lose homes, entire assets over civil matters. And that can be not to the same degree, but it can be just as devastating as losing your freedom in a criminal case. And so that is one area that I know personally I'm very passionate about making it, making it come to fruition. Secondly, if you currently have a dispute that falls under $15,000, the magistrate court, it's a part of a claim process that you can do with the magistrate court. And there is a mediation that can occur that will then, depending on the outcome of that, it is pro bono from what I understand. And we can definitely follow up with, um, I'm gonna talk about legal aid too. We can follow up with our magistrate judge on that because what we're working on right now is to raise that threshold higher so that it can cover all types of laws that fall under civil matters from federal law to state law to local law as well. So that's the second layer. The third layer is legal aid. There is a nonprofit organization that currently <coughs> exists um, that does receive funding uh, through all kinds of different vehicles, but they're there to serve as consultants, legal consultants on your behalf. They cannot represent you, but they can consult you, tell you what your options are, where you should go, how to navigate the system. And it's called legal aid. Also works very closely with the magistrate court. So whenever you think about evictions and that type of stuff, that all falls in that category of what is heard at the magistrate court. So that's your third layer. There are some options. It's not the full, the full amount, not the, not the dream yet, but there are some options currently today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello, teacher, students, the bridge class, my age commissioner. Hello. The problem in the the question that finished that another guy had, had asked my question. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, it's okay. But uh, commissioner, I I have a doubt about the in the period in the election. Everything always discussion about these immigrants, the importance, the immigrant, the working, the market, in your opinion, what is importance, the immigrants for the United States? because it divides. One of the things I always like to point to is that in every challenge, this is true, we are always confronted with a choice. Fear or love. That's it. So the only way to continue to push in love is to continue <coughs> to tell the story, to continue to connect, continue to build the bridge, 
and um, it just makes all the difference. When those relationships are authentic, you know, because it, it's, it's a thing, especially when we're culture, like, I'm from New Orleans. We have our own culture, too. So when I meet other New Orleans people, my accent changes. <laughs> I feel different. I feel safer. I know what to expect, right? The fear is kind of gone. And so the problem with that, though, is you get comfortable and you isolate from how others can engage and interact and learn. And while it may be safe in the short term, it puts the community at risk in the long term. And that is a huge responsibility for any community to bear. But it is. It just is. Why? Because it's a whole bunch of people with a whole bunch of different ideas and different experiences and different backgrounds. And so if there's ever going to be a change, it's going to be because there was a choice to practice love, to connect, to build a bridge. That's all I have. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Um, our class would like to know what it takes to be a county commissioner and what is a typical day for you? <laughs> Honestly, running for any office doesn't take much at all. It just doesn't. To, to be, <coughs> yeah. Like, it's not like, there are some requirements, don't get me wrong. And for the commission, I don't even know if there's technically an age requirement. I don't think there is. I just don't think anyone younger has tried it. But it's, there really aren't any real qualifications. And you should be able to see that in our representation. It's just, if you want to, you can, right? Um, that being said, it's, as far as a day in the life is concerned, it's, it can be very minimal. It is what you make it. That's like any other job, right? Technically, by law, the job I have as a commissioner is a part-time job. By law. Yes. 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 It's a part-time job. <laughs> it sounds like pastors, part-time pastors grow up. There you go. Oh, Lord. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's called a lie. <laughs> but in reality, the only requirement we have is two meetings a month. We don't even have to go to the zoning hearing. And even if we break that requirement, the only thing that can kick us out is if a resident does and votes us out. So it's really good to know who your representatives are. <laughs> um, it's, everybody defines their office differently. Like our office is very, very different from all of the other commissioners. And their offices are different too. You know. um, but a day, a, a normal day is honestly about 20 to 30 or so decisions. All right. Whether it be in a board meeting, it's a little bit more, right? Because you've got at least what, 50 to 70 agenda items in that board meeting. And you want to know what they are, right? So you kind of want to skim through them and say, like, oh, okay, they're fixing a pothole, needs funding. Okay, we're accepting a grant, needs an approval. Um, so you want to know what they are. So some of them are fairly easy decisions, and then some of them are very difficult decisions. Um, but you make some decisions, and then sometimes you get a call that says, hey, this thing came up, and we don't know how to respond to it. Figure that out, too. And so it's just a series of decisions. Um, but on the second and fourth Tuesdays, we show up, bless you, we show up at the uh, county seat right there off Cherokee, and, um, and, and, and we vote on the regular business. And on the third Tuesday, we vote on 
things that developers want to do in the community and we weigh out whether or not they're violating the law and we grant them approval based upon whether or not they follow the laws. Um, but the, the job itself is minimal. My day, a little bit crazy. <laughs> a little bit crazy. We love to do our events, our huddles, our um, community chats, our, um, we do a lot with staff, we do a lot with any of the cabinet, we have our interns, we've had about 60 interns go through our office in the last three years. And they all are doing amazing things now, it's great, I call it, it's our track record, one of the things we're proud of. Um, it's also thinking about problems. I think about problems a lot. People ask, I, say, I this, this job satisfies my ADD. It really does. You know, when I'm sitting at Equifax, we're talking about deploying, you know, tools and software into the cloud and making sure the controls are in place and they can't get hacked because they store PII and we don't want another country, a foreign adversary to do something crazy with your data. And then I get a message that says like, hey, um, Laura Roswell, we don't want, we don't want it to be fixed because of A, B, and C. It's like, okay. And then I'll get a text that's like, hey, um, this developer wants to renovate this hotel by Dobbins Air Force Base. Can they? And then I might get a question that's like, hey, what was the policy you came up with for the renter's bill of rights at the state legislature so we can help push that through? So like, it's just fun. <laughs> so if, 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 but it is a lot of problem solving. And if you care about the community, like that was really gonna be the answer I was gonna give you, it's heart. But like, not everybody is heart, it's not even true. But I, when people do ask me, should I run for office? I say, if you know why, and if you have a village. Otherwise, don't do it. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Um, we are listening about a lot of things and a lot of dreams here, but I would like to know uh, uh, in the, this room have a lot of students uh, with a biggest goal, uh, goals to form, uh, enter to job market or open your a company and what types you can give us for uh, be a successful in the business company in the USA yeah no yeah no it's a great question um, so I, I I am what you call um, a, I, I did okay starting a business, um, and I learned a whole lot starting a business. <laughs> uh, it was a couple of different types, but it really depends on what kind of business you're going into, right? So, um, uh, friendly advice, easy, because that was something that is just who I am. I show up, they tell me the problem, I like solving problems, and then we work on solving the problem, and they pay me for it, and it tend to work out, the problem that I solve. Um, if I were selling a, a particular trade, right, those are skills-based companies. And, and to that point, one of the things that I'll say is when it comes to starting a company here, it's the scale that tends to fall apart. Right, we have a lot of small businesses and a lot of small business programs, but once they start hiring people and grow, trying to grow, that's where the resources diminish. There really isn't a lot of support for that, and I think that also needs to change. Um, but as far as tips are concerned, the things that I can tell you that 
I've learned the different kinds of ventures that I've taken on. Um, one is there will always be some very tough times that make me think I should not do this at all, at all. Like, why, why am I doing this? I can, you know, I'm, I'm barely able to, to make ends meet because this month's ledger didn't work. Just didn't work. Didn't get the business I needed. Couldn't close the gap. Um, and you have to be willing to, to go through that. And one of the things that will allow you to go through that is to remember the vision. The other thing I would say is don't fall in love with your product. Fall in love with solving the problem. Um, if you fall in love with your product, when the customers say, we don't want that, you're not agile enough, you're not flexible enough to make the changes you need to make. Because you're going to go around and try to push that product. But, but, but it's the best thing. I mean, look, it's, it's, I'm trying to sell water to someone that, that, that has a river and a, and a treatment filter. Like, that's not going to work. And then the third, which is really related to that, is listen to your customers. That's, that's who's paying. So those things are really, really important. Um, and if you're trying to go into like the true startup games, that was another venture. Now it's actually how I got into software engineering because I had to teach myself how to code because I couldn't find investors. Um, and so I, I built the software myself and then deployed it. Um, it's, like I said, just making sure that you're making those, those flexible choices and pushing through. There are probably, there, there are many others I can probably give you, but those are some of the, the main ones, especially if you're starting off. So, Commissioner, thank you so, so, so much once again. Uh, I also heard that uh, uh, for those of you who were um, uh, wondering about representation or voice or the continuing, I heard that uh, this class is coming to visit the, the Board of Commissioners themselves, right? They're going to be with you. Are you you're receiving them over there? Mm -hmm. That is correct. Okay, we're going. <laughs> So folks, um, if you have continuing questions and conversations, there you have your ambassadors of the uh, uh, ESO program uh, over there. Actually, this is the, the business card <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we can't We can't begin to thank you enough for, the, for your kindness, both of you. Megan, uh, Megan, folks, was the person with whom our contact, as she assists and stands by the commission, of course. But uh, she was that kind. I mean, we were all excited and then broke. And Megan, is that you know that person that? Uh, no, she will love that. No, that. <laughs> <be done. laughs> so that there you have a, a, a neighbor that uh, bridges. Uh, problem solving with kindness, which is something unique, Megan. Thank you so much. Y'all so, don't know how lucky I am to have her. Thank you. Um, and uh, and I think that uh, we continue this process of education. As as commissioner, you said. Uh, those of you heard from her several, those of you who are going to business, you heard so many uh, in interesting and important elements of human-centered design, design thinking, that is popping up right here in her presentations. That's part of your upcoming and continuing study and, and the programs over here. Um, so I, I, I would only say this, uh, thanking our, our director, Domitila, 
thanking all of the faculty and, and the teachers. Could we give a big hand to the teachers too? Our our faculty, our fellows. Can you please stand? Will you please stand? Yes. <laughs>